Boeing just quietly handed us something analysts rarely get in a clean, comparable form. A yearly snapshot of how many military aircraft and helicopters actually left the factory gates or just as importantly, left the remanufacturing lines in 2025. And once you look past the brand names, the real story isn't about a single fighter or a single helicopter. It's about the shape of America's aerospace industrial reality in 2025. What gets built new, what gets upgraded, what gets delayed and what that says about priorities, bottlenecks and the future demand curve. Start with the headline number. Boeing delivered 127 military aircraft in 2025, but that includes modernized or rebuilt airframes, not only brand new machines. Strip it down to new production and the number drops to 60. That difference matters because it separates two very different worlds. New build production reflects supply chains, workforce capacity, and long-term procurement momentum. Modernization reflects something else. How much value militaries are trying to squeeze out of existing fleets because replacing them outright is too slow, too expensive, or both. So when you see 127, you're seeing a combined picture of industrial output and fleet life extension, and the ratio between the two is the first clue that the West is still fighting time. Now look at what dominates the list. In 2025, Boeing delivered 61 AH-64 Apaches, by far the largest category. But here's the twist. Only 19 were new, while 42 were modernized. That is not just a procurement statistic, it is a strategic signal. Attack helicopters remain in demand, but the fastest way to increase numbers isn't to wait for new airframes. It's to rebuild and upgrade what already exists. In 2024, Boeing delivered 50 Apaches, with 16 new and 34 modernized. So 2025 is an increase in total deliveries, and most of that increase comes from upgrades. Ask yourself, if the world is getting more dangerous, why aren't new numbers skyrocketing? Because new is the hardest thing to scale quickly. Modernization is the pressure valve that lets militaries claim capability growth without waiting a decade. And it raises an uncomfortable but necessary question. Are we measuring industrial strength or are we measuring industrial improvisation? If a large share of your deliveries are rebuilt aircraft, that can be smart. Especially when the platform is mature, the upgrade path is clear, and the mission set is urgent. But it also hints at a system where demand is outpacing the ability to expand clean sheet production. Next, the heavy lift workhorse, the CH-47 Chinook. Boeing delivered 14 in 2025, but only three were new builds. In 2024, it was 13 with four new. Again, the pattern repeats, steady output, low new build share. Yet the forward-looking context here is fascinating because the Chinook isn't a niche asset. It's logistics in rotor form, and Boeing's own numbers line up with the wider market signals mentioned in your source. Orders and interest coming from countries like Japan and Germany, with Belgium watching. That suggests an important dynamic. Even when armies modernize for high-end conflict, they still buy unsexy lift capacity because wars don't run on hype. They run on fuel, ammunition, spare parts, and the ability to move people and equipment under pressure. If you're seeing Chinook demand persist, you're seeing militaries admitting that mass and mobility still matter, then we get to fighters, and here the contrast is sharp. Boeing delivered 9 F-15S in 2025, down from 14 in 2024. On paper, that looks like a slowdown. But the F-15 family is not a single product anymore. It's a portfolio of variants serving different customers and timelines. Some deliveries could be F-15X for the US. Others could be export variants like the F-15QA for Qatar. And that matters because the F-15 line has become a kind of industrial bridge, a proven platform kept alive to fill capability gaps, sustain workforce skills, and offer a lower risk option for customers who want heavy payload and range without stepping fully into the F-35 ecosystem. So the question becomes, is this dip a one-year fluctuation tied to contract schedules, or is it a sign that the fighter market is tightening around fewer programs? The answer won't come from one year, but the direction is worth tracking. Carrier Aviation tells a different story. Boeing delivered 14 FA-18 Super Hornets in 2025, up from 11 in 2024. That's not a dramatic surge, but it's meaningful because the Super Hornet sits at a crossroads. The U.S. Navy is balancing readiness, modernization, and the long runway toward next-generation air combat. Meanwhile, export customers like Kuwait are still in the queue. So steady Super Hornet deliveries suggest the Navy is still buying time, keeping decks filled with a known quantity while the future remains expensive, complex, and not fully defined. In defense procurement, time is often the most valuable commodity, and platforms like the Super Hornet are how you purchase it. And then there's KC-46, the flying reminder that delivered does not always mean problem-free. Boeing delivered 14 KC-46 tankers in 2025 compared to 13 in 2024, even as the program continues to be associated with major technical and quality challenges and has reportedly generated more than $7 billion in losses for Boeing. 
This is what a strategic program looks like when it's too important to fail, but too troubled to celebrate. Tankers are not glamorous, but they are the invisible architecture of air power. Without them, range shrinks, sortie rates drop, and your global force becomes regional. So KC-46 deliveries continuing at a steady pace tells you something about U.S. priorities. The Air Force needs the aircraft even if the program is painful. And it tells you something about industrial discipline. When problems persist for years, they don't just cost money. They erode confidence, they consume management bandwidth, and they can crowd out innovation elsewhere. In contrast, the P-8 Poseidon is the quiet winner category. Boeing delivered six P-8S in 2025, up from four in 2024. That's a small number, but it sits in a strategically decisive niche, maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare. In a world where submarines remain one of the most survivable and therefore most destabilizing assets, the ability to find them, track them, and hold them at risk is priceless. And your source points out a brutal market reality. The P-8 has no real competitor in its class right now, so it remains the default choice for NATO countries, even being considered by Denmark. That's not merely a Boeing success, it's a sign of a consolidated market where a single mature platform becomes the alliance standard because developing alternatives would take too long. Finally, there's the MH-139 Grey Wolf 9 delivered in 2025, up from 6 in 2024. This is not a frontline combat icon, but it supports missions that are politically and strategically sensitive, search and rescue, VIP transport, and nuclear security patrols replacing the UH-1 in Huey. And that last mission is the key. Nuclear forces are the ultimate always-on requirement. You don't delay their support fleet because your budget is tight or your procurement system is tired. If MH-139 numbers are climbing, that suggests the U.S. is steadily modernizing the enabling layer around its nuclear enterprise, an area where good enough is never good enough. Now, the most telling absence, the T-7A trainer. In 2024, at least two were delivered. In 2025, they disappear from the reported list. And that is the kind of detail analysts love because it cuts through marketing and goes straight to schedule reality. Training pipelines are the foundation of air power. If your trainer program slips, the effect is delayed but ruthless. Fewer pilots, longer training times, and less readiness down the road. The source notes that the first official T-7A was handed to U.S. Training Command at the beginning of 2026. That implies 2025 was not the year of steady ramp-up. It was another year where the program's turbulence showed up as an industrial gap in the numbers. Put all of this together and one theme stands out. Boeing's 2025 military deliveries are less about revolutionary new fleets and more about sustaining, upgrading, and incrementally expanding what already exists. Apaches and Chinooks are dominated by modernization. Fighters and naval aircraft move in modest year-to-year -year steps. Tankers deliver steadily despite pain. Poseidon grows in a niche with no alternative. A critical trainer vanishes for a year, then reappears in early 2026. This is what a defense industrial base looks like when it's under pressure to do more, but not always able to do it faster. So the real question isn't how many aircraft did Boeing deliver? The real question is, what kind of future do these numbers predict? A future where modernization becomes the default method of growth because new production is too slow. A future where a handful of legacy platforms carry the burden longer than planned because next generation programs are late or expensive. Or a future where steady deliveries, even without dramatic surges, are enough to keep pace with rising threats. And one more nuance from your source matters. This is not necessarily the final fully locked report and the final quarterly reporting could still adjust numbers. But if it follows the pattern of 2024, changes may be minimal. Which means this snapshot is still highly useful, not as a headline, but as a baseline. Because the moment you can compare year over year, you can start asking the only question that matters in defense production, not what was promised, but what was actually delivered.